Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using arrays in Ruby. In Ruby, we're going to be dealing with lots of information. And a lot of times when you're writing programs, there's going to be a bunch of different values that you want to store and keep track of. And one way that we can keep track of the data inside of our programs is using a simple variable. Here's the problem with the variable, though. It can only really store one single value. And so I can create a variable. I could store a value inside of it. But what happens when I have lots of data? It's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt to have to create like hundreds of different variables if I wanna keep track of and maintain hundreds of different pieces of information. And this is where arrays come in. An array is essentially a structure or a container, a lot like a normal variable, the only difference being that an array can hold multiple values. So unlike a normal variable, an array can hold like 10 or 20 or 100 or a million different items inside of it. And a lot of times when we're programming in Ruby and we're dealing with large amounts of information, we're going to want to be able to use arrays. So let's jump in. I'm going to show you guys how to use arrays. We'll talk about, you know, what they are, how to create them, how to put stuff inside of them, and all that fun stuff. So down here, if I want to create an array, I create it a lot like I would a normal variable. The first thing we have to do is tell Ruby what we want the array to be called. So in my case, why don't we make an array that's going to store a bunch of names of my friends? So I can make an array called friends, and I'm going to set this equal to array with a capital A, and then we're going to make an open and closed square bracket. Inside of this open and closed square bracket, I can start putting in some of the pieces of data that I want to store in this array. In my case, I'm just going to store a bunch of strings with names of some of my friends. So I can store one like Kevin, Karen, and Oscar. So here we have an array that has three elements inside of it. And each one of these pieces of data are referred to as array elements. Basically what I did is I created a container that can hold multiple pieces of information. So what I can do now is I can come down here and I could just say like puts friends and this is actually going to print out all of the information inside of this array, all of the data values on my output over here. So you can see we're printing out Kevin, Karen, and Oscar. So that's the basics of using an array. And if I didn't want to just store strings, I could store any type of data inside here. So I could store strings, I could even store like a number, or I could store a Boolean value like false. You can put all different types of information, all different data types inside of these arrays. And if you want, you can even put different data types together in the same array. But for our purposes, let's just stick with strings. So let's say that I wanted to access one specific element inside of this array. Well, if I want to access just one element, I can make an open and closed square brackets after I'm referring to the variable name. And I can put an index inside of here. So let's say that I wanted to grab Kevin. Let's say I wanted to grab this first string inside of my array. I can put a zero inside of here. And a zero refers to the index of this Kevin value. So now when I print this out, you'll see we're just printing out Kevin. And this brings me to a point about arrays. We start indexing arrays at zero. So I would say that this Kevin attribute or this Kevin element inside of the array is at index position zero. Karen is at index position one and Oscar is at index position two. So the first element is always in index position zero, and then you just basically count up from there. So if I wanted to access Oscar over here, I could put a two inside of here, and now this is gonna print out Oscar. Another thing I can do is I can access array elements from the back of the array. So for example, another way I could access Oscar would be by putting a negative one in here. Basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna grab the item in the array, but it'll start counting from the back. So it'll basically like, this would be negative one, Oscar, this would be negative two, and this would be negative three. So if I said negative two in here, now we're gonna be grabbing Karen and printing that out. So that's two different ways that we can access elements inside the array. I could also grab a range of elements. So for example, let's say I only wanted to grab the first two elements inside this array and I didn't wanna grab the third one. I could say zero and then I could say two. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna grab index position zero all the way up to, but not including index position two. So it's gonna grab zero and one and it's gonna stop at two. So we're not gonna grab two. So now we're just gonna get Kevin and Karen. And 
this can be really useful just specifying like a range inside of this square brackets. There's also a bunch of other stuff that we can do with these arrays. So for example, let's say I wanted to modify one of the values inside the array. Well, I can come down here and I can just say friends. Let's say I wanted to change this uh, first element at index position zero. I could say friends zero and I can give it a new value. So I could say like Dwight. And now instead of having the value of Kevin, this is gonna have the value of Dwight. So when we print it out, we get that new value. And you can access and modify any individual element inside the array just by referring to its index. There's also gonna be situations where you're not gonna know exactly what elements you wanna put inside of the array right up front. So for example, over here, I knew exactly what friends I wanted to put in this array. But in some cases, you're not gonna know that right off the bat. So we can just say array.new. And now we're basically telling Ruby that we want friends to be an array, but that we don't wanna put any values into it just yet. Then down in my program, I can just start putting stuff in here. So for example, right now, if I printed out friends zero, you'll notice that nothing prints out. It's just a, a nil value, right? If I came over down here though, I could say friends zero, and I can just give this whatever value I want. So I could give this a value of like Michael. And now friends zero is gonna be Michael. And you can do that as, as much as you want. So I could even come down here and say like friends five, and I could give this a value. So now this is gonna be equal to Holly. And what you'll see over here, when I print out just the entire friends array, it's gonna fill in all of the elements that are between zero and five, just with blank elements. So those are just gonna be nil. And so that's kind of how you can create an array and not give it some initial information yet, and then add in information later. There's also a, a bunch of different methods that we can use with these arrays. So let's go back to that array that we were using before with all the friends. So if I wanted to access specific information about this array, I can use little methods. So I could say like friends dot, and one really useful one is length. So this will tell me how many elements are inside of this array. So you see over here, we have three. I can also check to see if certain elements are inside the array. So I could say friends dot, include and then I'm gonna put a question mark and over here I can type in an element that I would want to check to see if it's in the array so I could say like Karen and now this should give us a true value because Karen is inside of the array if I put like Karen's though so I changed it now this is gonna give a false value because that's not in the array you can also modify the order of the array so I could say like friends dot reverse and this will reverse all the elements so now it's gonna be Oscar Karen and then Kevin as you can see over here. You can also sort different elements in the array. So for example, if I wanted, I could sort all the elements. So if I were working with strings, we could sort them alphabetically. So if I put something over here, like Andy, and now Andy's gonna end up being in the front because it's going to sort the array alphabetically. So I'll say friends.sort. And now when we print this out, you'll see it's Andy, Karen, Kevin, and Oscar. So it moved Andy to the front because A comes before K and O. It's important to note though, that if you're gonna have an array that has multiple data types, so for example, if I put a, a, a number like an integer in here, this is gonna throw an error now because you can't sort it. There's, not, there's no way for us to compare like numbers and strings inside of Ruby. So that's the basics of working with arrays and arrays are super useful. There's gonna be tons of situations where we're gonna wanna store large amounts of information in a single container and arrays are great at doing that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.